Eh, okay, our next speaker is Mehdi, Mehdi Hosseini. Um, Dr. Hosseini received his PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Utah uh, uh, this year. He's currently a data, data scientist at Beyond Limits, and his research interests include resilience of power distribution grid and applications of machine learning in the operation of power and energy systems. So thank you, Mehdi, for being here. And his presentation is titled Data Analytics and Artificial Intelligence for Resilient Grid Operation. Uh, thank you very much, Hiro, for the quick introduction. Um, I'm uh, Matthew Oseni, a uh, recent PhD graduate at the US Smart Lab, and uh, today I'm going to present some of the works that I have done during my PhD regarding the use, uh, the use of artificial intelligence for en enhancing the resilience of power distribution systems. I also would like to thank the contributors to this work, Professor, Dr. Ma uh, Professor Masud Parvonio and also Luis Rodriguez Garcia. Uh, many of the speakers today talked about the resilience and the definition of the resilience, so some of these stuff are going to be repetitive, but some of the statistics are going to be interesting. Uh, so we have these high impact, low probability events that threaten the integrity of power distribution systems and power systems in general. 80%, more than 80% of these events are weather related. There are events like windstorms, hurricane or wildfire. And the most common ones uh, are related to, um, to events that include high wind speed, like wind storms and hurricanes. Between 80 and 90% of these events also happen uh, within the distribution level. So that is the focus of this presentation, enhancing the resilience of power distribution systems against these high impact, low probability events. Uh, the number of these events have been on the steady rise in the past four decades. So since 1980s, uh, we can kind of associate that with the trend of global warming. Um, in power, in operation of power distribution system, we typically uh, take three kinds of measures to mitigate the consequences of these events. There are either preventive measures, the kind of measures that we take before something happens in the system, like some planning measures or reinforcing the grid. And then there are restorative measures, the kind of measures that we take while something is going on in the system, like while a hurricane is going on, uh, power system is undergoing a hurricane. And then there are recovery measures, the measures we take after something happens in the system, like inspecting the system or managing the repairing process. Throughout these uh, three types of measures, the restorative measures are the ones that are very time sensitive because we have to make decisions in real time in a very uncertain environment. And that is why we need fast and reliable algorithms for this. That is where artificial intelligence can play an important role. This is a very typical problem of resilience that we encounter in the operation of power systems. So as an example or as a benchmark for high impact low probability event, we take hurricane as the example because that's the most common uh, high impact low probability event that we have in power systems. So we have a power distribution system that includes all, the, all these distributed resources and switches, and we have a hurricane that is approaching the power system. So while something is going, uh, is going on in the system, we need to strategically operate these distributed resources in a way that when uh, outages are expected due to hurricane, we have enough energy reserve, for example, in energy storage system, or we have enough fuel in DGs, so we can restore as much interrupted load as possible. Uh, to be able to have that kind of operation, we need some realistic scenarios, realistic uh, out, outage scenarios that are induced actually by, uh, by, by this hurricane. To do that, to, uh, to generate those realistic scenarios, we use this uh, model of the hurricane wind speed. Uh, we got this from meteorological studies, and this model actually gives us the wind speed that is experienced by each of the power system equipment that are located at distance R of the hurricane eye. So we only need uh, real-time uh, weather data to have this model. So we have the wind speed that each of the equipment is experiencing this, uh, during the hurricane. And we also have the fragility curves of the equipment, uh, which gives us the failure probability of this equipment if they are exposed to a certain wind speed. So having these two models, having these two data, allows us to generate some realistic power, uh, realistic power outages during the hurricane. The way that we typically uh, solve the problem of uh, Brazilian power system operation is to use a stochastic operation. That's what, uh, like right now, utility companies, they are using that. 
they are generating these scenarios. They generate some realistic power outage scenarios that they are expecting for future hours. And then instead of uh, uh, optimizing the operation for only one scenario, they optimize it over all these scenarios. And that gives them like more confidence that uh, this operation model is going to mitigate the consequences of the hurricane. Uh, although this, um, this method uh, works right now and it's very common in power system operation, there are some shortcomings. One of the most important shortcomings is the cares of dimensionality. Because we are using, using mathematical optimization, there are a limited number of variables that we can consider. Either there are uh, distributed resources, we cannot have unlimited distributed resources, or the number of scenarios that we are considering. Actually, in practice, we are limited to only a handful of scenarios, like around 10 uh, scenarios or even less than 10 scenarios. So we can solve this problem in a reasonable time for real-time operation. Um, also, the running time, uh, if we want to consider more number of scenarios, is going to be high. So the running time is always a problem with mathematical optimization. The exact model of the uncertainties that is needed for a stochastic optimization is not always available when we are dealing with high impact, low probability events. And also mathematical optimization is sensitive to integer variables that are very common in distribution systems. So to address all these problems, uh, we use artificial intelligence. Um, and the method that we used here was deep reinforcement learning because it proved very effective in environments that are highly uncertain or very high dimensional. Uh, so the rest of this presentation is mostly about using deep reinforcement learning to operate power systems uh, during these high impact, low probability events. A quick uh, introduction of deep reinforcement learning. So uh, to use deep reinforcement learning, we have to formulate our problem as a Markov decision process. So we have some system states and there are some available actions in each system state. And by taking any action, we get a reward. And the objective is to maximize these rewards over a long period of time. And the way that deep reinforcement learning or DRL uh, solves this problem is to, is to assign a Q value to each action in each system state. And it uses a recursive formulation to find the true Q value in each system state. Once we have the true Q value of actions in each system state, then we can choose the action with the highest Q value. And that would be the action with the highest long term reward. Uh, in the power system context, for example, the system state would be anything that affects the power system operation. For example, the energy reserve of distributed resources like energy storages or uh, field reserve of distributed generators. The state of lines, load, price, weather data, and the available actions are the output of distributed resources. And the reward is the operation cost or saving in operation costs or any function that is typically based on the operation cost. So a quick comparison between a stochastic optimization, which is the common practice to deal with this problem, and deep reinforcement learning, why we are using deep reinforcement learning. So in terms of running time, why, uh, when you train, once you train a deep reinforcement learning agent, it can make decisions in a matter of milliseconds, which is basically real time. It is massively scalable. Uh, it can be trained on almost unlimited number of scenarios, and it's not sensitive to integer variables. So it's kind, it kind of addresses all of, all of the shortcomings of a stochastic optimization that is uh, common these days. But on the other hand, in terms of optimality and uh, feasibility guarantee, there are also some shortcomings with deep reinforcement learning. It never guarantee that the uh, solution that it gives uh, always respect the constraints of power system. So that is the part that we will, we will be addressing and we will be focusing in this presentation. So this is the general flow. Uh, typically, a stochastic optimization is used for this problem. It has some shortcomings, but it is optimal and it guarantees feasibility. Deep reinforcement learning is kind of the opposite of that. It addresses the shortcomings, but in terms of opt optimality and feasibility guarantee, it has some shortcomings. So to address those two aspects, uh, we came up with two solutions. One of them is to couple deep reinforcement learning with mathematical optimization, and the other is to uh, find the feasibility region for the output space of DRL and online and verify the solution online. And uh, I will be talking them uh, talking about those solutions in more details. So in the first step, we use deep reinforcement learning instead of a stochastic optimization, totally replacing the operational model. 
The way we do that is that we first generate a hurricane scenario, a realistic uh, hurricane scenario, and the outage scenario for 24 hours. And then we train the deep reinforcement learning agent for one episode. Uh, in each step, we take an action, we get the reward, and we update the neural networks and deep reinforcement learning module that we have. So we do this for as many times as required for our um, model to be trained. Once it is converged and it is trained, then we detach the uh, deep reinforcement learning model, the decision-making module, and apply it directly on a power system that undergoes a hurricane. Uh, these are some comparison between the results of deep reinforcement learning and two other operational models. One of them is the naive operation model that doesn't consider any outages, possible outages in future hours. And the other one is scenario based or it is a stochastic optimization that we talked about. So deep reinforcement learning outperforms both of them in terms of operation cost and also in terms of running time. The running time is at least three orders of magnitude faster. So while it takes uh, a stochastic optimization up to several minutes to make decision. Deep reinforcement learning can take that decision in the order of milliseconds. Uh, it is also reflected, uh, actually the performance is reflected in uh, the actions that are taken by, by, by distributed resources. When we use naive operation or stochastic optimization, the performance is uh, kind of dependent on energy price. So it is uh, still responsive to energy price uh, but during the hurricane, we don't want that. We want it to only responsive to the outage scenarios because that's the higher priority. But deep reinforcement learning is not responsive to energy price because its priority is the outages. It saves the energy in beginning hours and store them for future hours when uh, outages are expected in power systems. Uh, so we can strategically decide on the operation of distributed resources using deep reinforcement learning, but still we have those problems of feasibility guarantee. Like the solution that we have, the actions that deep reinforcement learning decide for the output of distributed resources might violate power system operation. So this is the first uh, solution for that, to guarantee the feasibility, to couple deep reinforcement learning with mathematical optimization. The way we do this is that instead of having one central controller, we divide the system into a smaller zones and each of these zones are small enough that the small power transactions inside the zone doesn't violate the power system constraints. And having that assumption, we can assign local controllers for each of these, distribu for each of these distribution zones. These local controllers are trained by deep reinforcement learning without concerning or without worrying about the power system constraints. And then we have a central controller, which is based on optimization, and it solves a smaller version of uh, power system flow where each zone of the system is treated as a single node. And uh, that is how we can have the mathematical optimization to check the power system constraints while uh, we have a fast response time without the need uh, of uh, a central controller to run the power flow for the whole node, for all of the nodes, for, for the whole power distribution system. This is another representation of the hierarchical model. Uh, so we can, in each of the zones, we can have integrated hybrid resources that consist of multiple energy storage systems, renewable generation, flexible loads, and each of those IHRs or integrated hybrid resources is controlled by one of those local controllers that are named IHR, IHR controller here. Um, and uh, they can make decision on the active power dispatch of each zone. And then a central controller receives those signals and check if the power system constraints are met at all times. Um, this, is an, this is the implementation of this method on 123 bus test system. So we divided that into six zones. Each zone has one IHR that consists of 10 distributed resources. Uh, we trained local controllers by two different deep reinforcement learning models, DDPG and SAC. We tried that to reach a higher optimality because optimality is also one of the problems of deep reinforcement learning. It doesn't guarantee the global optimum uh, on like a stochastic optimization. But when we are using SAC or soft actor critic network, the optimality, as it is shown by the uh, top right picture, the optimality or the performance is very close to the perfect knowledge model. So we can reach a very good performance using deep reinforcement learning while we guarantee that the power system constraints are met at all times. 
Uh, we also implemented this, mod uh, this model on a hardware. We have a power system simulator in the lab. Uh, so we implemented a 33 bus test system in that simulator. We divided that into three different zones. Each zone has a local controller that is trained by deep reinforcement learning and is implemented on a Raspberry Pi module. module. And then we have a central controller that coordinates these modules together. Um, and this is a visualization that we have. We have three different zones of the system. Each of them has their own local controllers with their signals and then a central controller that receives all these signals and coordinate between them. The top picture shows normal operation, which is price-based, but when we have uh, a fault in lower picture in the first zone, the other two zones are islanded, and then they are reassorted by, uh, by distributed resources that we have available in the system. Um, the hardware imp implementation confirms that this model, uh, this coupling of deep reinforcement learning and optimization can manage faults and at the same time maintain the uh, system constraints at all times. <clears throat> this was the first solution to address the feasibility guarantee of deep reinforcement learning. The second solution we have is the online verification of the solutions that we get from DRL. And um, in this um, actually new project, we had this idea that, uh, okay, when we uh, make decision using deep reinforcement learning, we can have a convex region uh, that shows the feasible region uh, for the action space. Um, if we can have some region like that, then it is very easy and quick to check if the solution is feasible or not. And if the solution is outside of this region or it is infeasible, we can find its projection on the surface of the feasibility region and use that as the closest uh, feasible action. Uh, there are some mathematical work behind this, but uh, it, it is proved uh, in our work that if, for example, in a two-dimensional uh, space, if we have four points in the space, the tightest uh, four points in the, in the space that are feasible, the tightest, tightest feasible region that is enclosed by those four points is the diamond that is enclosed by them. And in higher dimension, it becomes a k-dimensional polyhedron. Generally, we refer to that as the feasibility diamond, um, and it, it can be represented by the formulation of the diamond. And if we can find this diamond, hopefully the largest diamond that is inside our action space, then it is easy to uh, check the feasibility of solutions and find the projection of infeasible solutions onto the surface of the feasible region. So this is how we find this uh, feasibility diamond. To find, this phys to find a feasibility diamond, we need to find the center uh, that meet the power system constraints. And if we move from this center in each dimension k with distance rk, we reach a new uh, feasible point. So that is how we can find a feasibility diamond. And then if we maximize the volume of this diamond, then we can have the largest feasibility diamond to check our solutions. So this is the model that we are solved. We are maximizing the volume of this diamond. And then we have a set of power system constraints. The first set of constraints uh, make sure that the center of this diamond is uh, always feasible. It satisfies the power system constraint. And then we have another set of constraints that shows, for example, in one of the dimensions, which is the output power of the generators, if we move uh, with distance RK, we still reach to a feasible point. And we need to have the same set of constraints for all of the uh, dimensions in the action space, which is typically P and Q of the distributed generators. Once we have this diamond, it is easy to check if the solution is inside or outside. And if it is outside, we can find the projection of that on the surface of the feasibility diamond. And then we can use that distance between the originally made decisions and the projection on the surface to penalize the infeasibilities. And we use the penalization factor W uh, to do this during the training. <clears throat> um, these are some results. It shows that if we change this feasibility uh, penalization factor W, how, the, how it affects the optimality and infeasibility rate. So we ran two different studies. The first study doesn't use any action modification. It only penalizes the infeasibilities based on the distance of the originally made decisions that are infeasible and the projection on the feasibility diamond. And as we increase the W or penalization factor, the optimality drops, the infeasibility rate also drops, but it never reaches zero. 
In the second study, we use actual modification. We find the projection on the uh, feasibility space, on the feasible space, and then the infeasibility rate reaches zero. It shows that the best practice is to use action modification and also use a small penalization factor that doesn't affect the optimality of solutions very much. So to conclude the research, um, we showed that the real-time resilient operation is a high dimensional and highly uncertain problem. And typically we use a stochastic optimization for that, but at the cost of limited scalability and limited observability of uncertainties because we can only train that, not train that, we can only optimize that over a limited number of scenarios. On the other hand, deep reinforcement learning can be useful uh, to, um, to tackle the scalability and the observability of uncertainties, but it has two shortcomings, the feasibility and optimality. To tackle the feasibility problem, we came up with two new solutions. Uh, one of them is the hierarchical combination of DRL with mathematical optimization, and also online verification of DRL solutions by finding a feasible region that we can quickly check the solutions with that. Um, also, we implemented this method, the, the hierarchical method on the hardware, and we confirmed that uh, it can, we confirmed the practicality uh, of the hierarchical model. Um, that it can be up, uh, it can manage faults and at the same time it can meet the power system constraints. Um, these are some journals that uh, we have published about the same topic. Uh, this presentation actually was uh, kind of the summary of these journals uh, and conference papers that we published during the past four years. Um, and thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions. Thank you so much, Mary, for the for the nice presentation. Uh, we have I think enough time for a couple of questions. So is there any, any question from the audience? Thank you, Mary, for your presentation. Uh, I just had a question about the since it is going to be used as a reference point for the deep reinforcement learning to check the feasibility, what number of scenarios do you plan to get that feasibility vision? I see. As far as, far as I understood, you use an optimization based solution. Yeah. Um, I think I can see what is the confusion. So we use a stochastic optimization for resilient operation, and then we have another optimization model here to find the feasibility region. So feasibility region is uh, kind of dependent, is, is not dependent on the outage scenarios that, scenarios that we have. Uh, so it just says that within the power distribution system, uh, what combination of the active and reactive generation of distributed resources can result into an infeasible solution. And uh, that is how we uh, find this feasibility region in the P and Q uh, space. Um, one of the things that we, one of the problems that we encountered in this in this work was to consider the switching operation or network reconfiguration. And if you want to consider network reconfiguration, it is not possible to have only one feasible region, uh, which is convex, because every configuration has its own feasibility region, uh, which is convex. Then you have to have multiple convex feasibility region for each of those uh, configurations. Uh, so if uh, network configuration changes for any reason, you need a new one. But if uh, your system, typically power distribution system is stick with a couple of, with a limited number of configurations because they have a limited number of tie switches between the system. And uh, at the end, we concluded that you have to have different regions for each of the configuration, which is not hard to obtain and use those uh, for, for this purpose. But the, this methodology finds the feasibility region in the P and Q space of generators. So. Thank you so much, Mary. Is there any, any other question? We can take an, one last question from the audience. Just one question uh, about the thing. Uh, First, you have 
Right. Uh, so the power system constraints are nonlinear, uh, are inherently nonlinear, but typically we use some convex approximation of that. So here we use the linear approximation of power system constraints. Uh, so the optimization is linear with the exception of the objective function. So the objective function is to maximize the volume of the diamond, which is the multiplication of the semi axes uh, To tackle that problem, we uh, use an approximation. Instead of maximizing the multiplication, we use this uh, summation of the semi axes that are normalized uh, and uh, we use that. Uh, in the studies, that it showed that it reaches uh, the same the same result as uh, maximizing the multiplication of semi axes But uh, the type of optimization is linear here. We use the linear approximation of power system constraints. Uh, 